Hi everyone and welcome back to my desk. I've been recently playing with this millimeter wave a human body presence sensors and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can use them, how to configure them and at the end we'll see how we can control an LED through its output using an ESP32. This one here in particular is the LD2410 version C uh, which has uh, like a square form factor and can be easily controlled via serial. You can see here on the front that we have four, uh, five pins. We have takes and RX for the UART communication. We have uh, VCC and ground for powering, and we have an out pin that we can directly use to uh, provide the digital output, whether the sensor has a presence or not. But because we're connecting through serial, we're gonna get much more data through it and we'll have better understanding of what's going on. The biggest difference on using the millimeter wave compared to the passive infrared sensors that we've been using so far to detect movement is that this can also detect even if someone is stationary. So for example, with the passive infrared sensor, someone will have to keep moving in order to be detected as being present in, an, uh, in a room. But with these new sensors, you can also detect if someone is standing or sitting or even sleeping in a bed and uh, you would still know that there is someone present even if there is no movement. And before we continue, let's thank this video sponsor, Altium 365, the future of electronic hardware development. Altium 365 revolutionized how we design and collaborate, making it easier and faster to deliver great products. With powerful data management and version control, you can securely store all your design's data and track changes effortlessly. Need components? Altium 365's library management gives you access to millions of parts and the latest supply chain data in one place. Plus, collaborating with your team is seamless with digital design reviews and real-time feedback. Streamline your project with supply chain management, offering real-time data on parts availability, pricing, and risk management, so your designs are always manufacturable. Whether you're looking to simplify complex product development processes or collaborate seamlessly with your team, Altium 365 has got you covered. To experience the incredible benefits of Altium 365, Sign up for the free trial using the link in the video description. The sensor works at 24 gigahertz and what's interesting about it is that uh, you could also sense the distance between the sensor and the person that we are targeting and there are a version of it that would also look for multiple targets so you could detect multiple people if they're present or not. This one only sees one and uh, to hook it up I'll use a USB to serial adapter and then we'll see two variants where we're going to use an ESP32 board. The sensor can work with distances of up to 5 to 6 meters depending on the environment and there are several zones that we can define within that distance up to 8 zones where we could have a different sensitivity in each that would trigger the output and we would trigger the in our case later we'll trigger the LED but you could decide to do whatever you want with the data. Now I'm gonna hook the one with the USB to serial adapter so we could see the data and there are a few interesting softwares that you can use to visualize it. Now let's move to the computer to show you. Okay so this is the LD2410 tool that uh, comes from the manufacturer of the sensor that you could use to visualize the data. The default baud rate is 256,000 so and the port that we have connected is COM5 so as soon as we connect the software. Okay why is that so? Yeah so make sure that you only have one serial connection because I had the serial monitor open here within the Arduino IDE to check out the output from the other from the ESP32 so we need to close this so let's try now and now we've connected to the sensor so we need to click on start to start presenting the data and you would see here so these are the eight zones that the sensor has and this is the targets that, that we have. You could see that it's already detecting me both in the moving and the motionless target and the green line is the thresholds that are set for each of the zones. I'll try to go further back. You would see that we are now starting to get some distance and if I get closer it sees that I'm 
basically right next to the sensor. If I'm gonna now stand up and go for it a little bit back, And also, if I stand for a while, you would see that here in the top, it moves from moving target to motionless target. So I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna try to be as still as possible. So you would see that we do have difference between moving and a motionless target. Now, if we click on this button here with the sensors, we're gonna get the sensibility configuration where for each of the zones, uh, we could define the moving sensibility and the motionless sensibility. So we could double click and edit any of these values depending on the scenario that we want to have and the scenario where the sensor we want to be most sensitive. So, for example, you maybe don't want to be that sensitive when someone is close by, but you want to be sensitive when someone is further apart. And this is something that you could configure um, for the sensor and it will amplify any of the uh, thresholds that are uh, at certain uh, gate. A similar configuration tool has been made for the web as well by Albert Nisbet that I'm going to have linked below that we could select the baud rate here, select the port, and so this one, and then we're gonna see the similar data and you could see the raw data here if you want to. This is all of the gates that we have and then the further back I go that uh, we will see that movement moving through the gates. So the first gate and the second gate will start reducing and then the other gates will pick me up. And I'm currently at about two meters distance. So we would see we're triggering gate three at the most. And if I come closer, then it will be gate zero and gate one. Up here, we have the output, whether we have detection, this one will be, will be lit up when we don't. Then we have, when we have stationary, and you would see the movement will go on and off as it detects me if I try to be steady. You see that that changes just by speaking, I'm triggering that and it detects that I have movement. If I rock on my chair left and right, you would see that the movement stays on constantly. If I stop, then you see that detects that as being stationary. Now for our second demo, I've used an ESP32 board to connect the sensor to pins 16 and 17 for the serial communication. And I'm using the second serial port on the ESP32. And I'm also having an LED on pin 15 uh, that's connected also to ground uh, with the 100 ohm resistor. So we could see visually the output and I have this configured based on the my LD2410 uh, library for the sensor where whenever we are detecting any movement, then I would turn the LED on and when no movement is, de is detected, I would turn the LED off. And at the same time, based on the example sketch, I'm displaying all of the data that we get from the sensor to the serial console. So you could see that we are getting the status that we are both moving and stationary. So it detects me as moving and uh, also as stationary. In the moving, we have the confidence at uh, 100 at about 30 to 40 centimeters. So that distance is not really that precise, but it's good enough for what we need. Then we have the values that we have at each of the gates and also the thresholds that we have set for each of the gates in the moving section and also in the stationary section. So you, you could see that we are displaying all of the same data that we saw earlier with the helper tools, but now in the Arduino console that we can interact with. Now to, to show you how this works, so you would see the LED is currently on and I have the sensor pointing. I'm gonna tilt it slightly 
to the side and I'm going to stand up and walk away from the room, then you would see that the LED would turn off and then in the serial console, you would see that we're going to get a different message that no movement is detected. So let me do that just now. And as soon as I enter the room again, you see that the LED turns on again and we still get the data. So we can use this to instantly control a certain light and turn it on or off based on if someone is detected within a room and we can use this in a lot of application. In this example, I have the sensor wired to five volts to the V in pin on the SP32. And based on the specification, this can work from five up to 12 volts. But uh, since I was initially testing the sensor with another board, the Fire Beetle 2 from DF Robot, then um, because this board has a charging circuit for a solar panel and a lithium ion battery, the V in pin is not really connected to the 5 volt input and there is no dedicated 5 volt pin on the board. So in this case, I've powered the sensor from 3.3 volts and it seems to be working just fine. I'm not sure how reliable that would be, but it's something that you can keep in mind uh, for your next projects. And with that, I'm gonna end the video right here. In the video description, you're gonna have all the links to the tools that I've used and as well as the code that I have running on the SP32 to control the LED. So, and that should give you a really good starting point for your project. So you could integrate a millimeter wave presence sensors in it. I hope that you like this video. Make sure to hit that like button below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos in the future. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.